we present to you an interesting case of a deceptive coloboma we are sure that there is no financial interest in the making of the video and it is purely for academic purposes only a 45 year old male presented to our vitreo retina services with complaints of sudden onset blurring of vision in the right eye for 3 months it was painless and progressive in nature he gave us a history of blunt trauma to the right eye in a road traffic accident on ophthalmic evaluation snellen's visual acuity in the right eye was 3 by 60 and in the left eye it was 6 by 6 anterior segment findings in both the eyes were within normal limits but the intraocular pressure in the right eye was reduced to just 2 mm of mercury Fundus evaluation of the right eye showed a clear media with hyperemic and edematous disc. The blood vessels located at the posterior pole were dilated. Presence of diffuse chorioretinal folds could also be appreciated. An unusual finding was the presence of an atypical retinochoroidal coloboma in the superior temporal quadrant unlike the typical inferior location. An ultrasound biomicroscopy was done which did not reveal any cyclodialysis cleft. An optical coherence tomography of the macula showed irregular retinochoroidal folds with diffuse choroidal thickening. The ultrasound of the right eye showed an echolucent area just outside the sclera adjacent to the coloboma. A traumatic scleral fistula near the temporal edge of the coloboma was suspected. based on the history clinical evaluation and ancillary investigations a final diagnosis of right eye atypical retinochoroidal coloboma hypotonic maculopathy and disc edema along with traumatic scleral fistula was made literature review showed a few reports of the scleral fistula closing spontaneously some have reported repair of the coloboma fistula externally with suture imbrication and scleral buckling some have also used meridional silicon buckles isolated case reports also suggest use of buckle and amniotic membrane grafts we decided to do an internal repair which has not been reported so far we decided to go ahead with vitrectomy as there was progressive decrease in vision and the fistula was not amenable for buckle we made a surgical plan to perform core vitrectomy endophotocoagulation and internal tamponade choice of the tamponade agent was one of the most crucial steps in the surgery we considered injection of an expansile gas bubble into the vitreous cavity but the gas bubble would not conform to the shape of the coloboma usage of silicon oil could lead to leakage into the orbital cavity hence we plan to inject a non expansile gas which would give a complete gas fill with minimal leakage into the orbit higher surface tension of the gas bubble would effectively seal the edge defect in a trap door like fashion preventing further egress of fluid in subretinal space a standard 3 port 23 gauge vitrectomy was initiated sclerotomies were made 3 mm from the limbus in the inferior temporal superior temporal and superior nasal quadrants a complete parts plana vitrectomy was done posterior vitreous detachment was not present and hence it was induced with suction from the disc with the vitrectomy cutter posterior hyoid phase was found to be firmly adherent to the coloboma margin hydrogenic breaks occurred while inducing pvd temporal to the coloboma intravitreal triamcinolone acetonide was instilled and remnant vitreous especially near the coloboma edges was removed completely A fluid air exchange was done followed by endolaser barrage around the coloboma and around the iatrogenic bricks temporarily. Air was exchanged with 14% C3F8 gas. Sclerotomies were sutured with 70 vicryl sutures. The patient was advised to maintain a prone position in the post-operative period. On post-operative day 6, the retina was well attached. 
with resolving disc edema and settling chorioretinal folds. Intraocular pressure was found to increase to 16 mm of mercury. At 6 weeks follow-up, the best corrected visual acuity in the right eye had improved to 6x6 from the initial 3x60 and the intraocular pressure was now 15 mm of mercury. Fundus examination revealed an attached retina with atypical choroidal coloboma and complete resolution of disc edema and chorioretinal folds and a presence of a small remnant C3F8 gas bubble. OCT was done which showed a normal foveal contour with resolution of retinal and choroidal folds. Ultrasound did not show any echolucent space at the coloboma edge suggesting closure of the fistula and subsequent resolution of the hypotony after surgery. One year later, the visual acuity was maintained at 6x6 and the intraocular pressure was within normal limits. There was complete resolution of hypotony-related disc edema and maculopathy. The take-home message from this case discussion is the edge or floor of the coloboma are vulnerable to trauma. The resulting fistula can cause hypotony and related complications and reduced vision. Ultrasound and UPM are crucial for the diagnosis. This interesting case demonstrates the successful closure of a traumatic scleral fistula from an internal approach with vitrectomy and gas. Thank you for watching this video.